So people have this belief that cannabis or marijuana is this benign, innocuous substance. And I can tell you that the clients that I see in my office, uh, I see uh, ruined lives and destroyed futures from marijuana. A woman receives what some would consider a slap on the wrist by a California judge after she was sentenced to probation and no prison time for fatally stabbing a man she was dating more than a hundred times. A California jury found Bren Spacer guilty in December of involuntary manslaughter for the 2018 stabbing death of 26-year-old accountant Chad Omelia. According to reports, Bren and Chad had been dating just a few weeks when she attacked him after taking hits from a bong filled with marijuana. Bren stabbed Chad 108 times, killing him after suffering from a cannabis-induced psychotic break. So psychosis is literally a departure from reality. People lose touch with reality. Um, psychosis can come in many forms. There's schizophrenia, which a lot of us have heard about, but drugs like cannabis can also induce symptoms of psychosis. And that can be paranoia, auditory hallucinations, disorganized thinking. So people who are in a psychosis may at the time not know the difference between right and wrong, or may not be able to restrain themselves or appreciate the wrongfulness of their actions. So every state, as you know, uh, has uh, an NGRI statute. In fact, some states actually don't have an NGRI defense, but California does. So it is possible for someone in a psychosis to, may not, to possibly not have the capacity to know the difference between right and wrong, um, and that is how this marijuana uh, fits into it. I spoke with forensic psychiatrist Dr. Daniel Bober. He tells me many people believe marijuana doesn't present a danger, but he's seen lives ruined from the drug. The fact is that in the last 30 years, the percentage of THC has increased dramatically in marijuana. It used to be around 2 or 3%, and now it's sometimes as high as 60 or 70%. So we're seeing these cases of psychosis that don't go away, the classical thinking was that it was temporary, but there are certain people, and we don't know who they are, that are vulnerable to these effects of marijuana and can become completely psychotic to the point where they may never recover and may need lifelong medication. And we don't know who are vulnerable to these effects of the marijuana. You know, some people can smoke marijuana for 40 or 50 years, they never have a problem. But some people, whether it's because they have a genetic propensity to develop psychosis or schizophrenia, may be more prone to these effects. Psychosis can be just as extreme and just as symptomatic as schizophrenia. Uh, and there is a belief that in certain people that the marijuana or the cannabis might touch off these symptoms, they may develop a permanent schizophrenic illness due to the substance. Police say when officers arrived on scene, they found Chad in a pool of blood and Bryn screaming hysterically while still holding the bread knife used to kill him. During the violent melee, she also stabbed her beloved service dog to death. To me, the fact that she stabbed herself along with the service dog and not just the boyfriend would, you know, speak to the random nature of the crime, that he wasn't the intended target and that there was very little organized thinking to her actions and that she was simply randomly stabbing whoever was around her. And when officers tried to disarm her, Bryn tried to take her own life. She plunged the knife into her own neck and stabbed herself repeatedly. Police reportedly had to use a taser and several baton blows to disarm her before then calling paramedics. Bryn had been out on bond since the 2018 stabbing and her subsequent arrest. She was originally charged with murder, but prosecutors asked for a lesser charge after the state's expert determined Bryn was, quote, acutely psychotic from the bong rips. During her trial, more than five years after the shocking crime, both the prosecution and defense agreed the attack was caused by weed. Bryn's lawyers argued Chad had pressured and intimidated her into taking the last bong hit. And under California law, people are responsible for their actions when impaired by alcohol or drugs, unless their intoxication was involuntary. The jury rejected that argument, only deliberating less than four hours before finding her guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Spacer faced up to four years in prison along with sentence enhancements. But according to KTLA, the judge ruled that given the facts in the case, he didn't believe it was warranted, ultimately letting Brent off with probation and no hard time behind bars. So I know that people are uncomfortable with the insanity defense. This particularly was true uh, after the attempted assassination of President Reagan. There were some changes in the law. People are very uncomfortable about not holding someone responsible when they commit a crime. But the fact is, is that, you know, using a substance is not a defense for a crime that would be called voluntary intoxication. 
but psychosis that is induced by a substance could be used for an insanity defense. So I think that uh, it is possible that if someone were psychotic, that they may not be responsible for their actions. So even though that that makes people uncomfortable, uh, it is something that the law recognizes it as a as a valid defense. I agree with the decision. I think that most people don't realize that the insanity defense is used less than 1% of the time, and it is even um, successful even less frequently. So it, despite what people might see on the movies or on TV, the insanity defense is very rarely used and even more rarely successful. So I think in this particular case, the facts were so extreme uh, that it turned out to be a valid defense. Local outlets reported outrage over the judge's decision to let Brynn off with probation. Here you can see Chad's father who stood outside the courthouse prior to sentencing demanding justice for his son. He previously spoke with News Nation's Ashley Banfield after Brynn's charges were reduced and shared insight into Brynn and Chad's relationship. Information that I've heard, all the um, you know testimony I've heard, that they were getting along just fine. Um, it was very, very early on. They had just met each other about three weeks ago. So the relationship hadn't run its course or gotten very far into it at all. But no, there was no uh, fighting or arguing or anything like that. They were both you know, professional people. My son was an accountant. Uh, she was an audiologist. So uh, they both had bright futures. They really did. According to the Ventura Star, Brynn's sentence prompted an audible response from Chad's loved ones as they exclaimed shock and anger. But Dr. Bober explains the situation isn't as black and white as it may seem. So this is a lot more than just, quote unquote, someone smoking some weed and getting off. This is not the weed itself. This is the disease or the symptoms that is caused by smoking the weed and the psychosis that was a result or touched off by smoking the weed. So. Smoking the weed may be, again, benign in itself for most people, but in this particular case, they developed something that was caused by the weed or the marijuana, and that is what we're really talking about here. We're not talking about just smoking a joint, so to speak, and getting off you know, scot-free. We're talking about a, a disorder that was induced by the cannabis that is what led to this situation occurring. So what could Bren's life look like in the future? Dr. Bober says lifelong treatment is possible. So the people that suffer from this disorder are treated with antipsychotic medication. Uh, sometimes they can go for about a year and you could see how they do without medication, but very often they may require lifelong or indefinite antipsychotic treatment. And I'm actually dealing with this even just today. Uh, it's a question of finding the right medication that they're going to respond to. So sometimes it can be trial and error. Uh, but they may need that medication for life to control their symptoms. I think the larger message in all of this is that cannabis is a very, very serious substance. Uh, it's not something that should be taken lightly, uh, particularly for people who are developing. Uh, it can cause very severe, very significant symptoms, as we're seeing here. And to be aware that it's something that is a significant public health problem, uh, and we all need to be paying attention to that. Brynn Spacer was also sentenced to 100 hours of community service. If she violates her probation, the judge said she will have to do four years of prison time. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.